It is at home. Back. Don't touch anything. I'm not going to touch anything. I'm. It's all good. Sorry to waste time. Okay, let's okay. let's get this show on the road. Sorry. Let's get to it. Welcome everybody. Um, first, I want to thank our guests. I never even knew this was a possibility until I saw somebody do it on YouTube. And here we are. This is so cool. Um, Emily Berry, uh, if you don't know her, she has a wicked cooking show on Instagram where she cooks dinner for her family. It's quite something. <laughs> and she happens to operate a, a, a significantly large real estate team. She's, uh, she's a champ. So welcome, Emily. Thank you so much. And Katie, uh, the Fenora team with your dad. Your sister joined you now? Yeah, she did. She also had a baby. So <laughs> she's she unjoined for a little bit. For a little bit, yeah, and yeah. Uh, just starting to get back into it a little bit. So she was doing a lot of open houses for us when that was a thing. She was yeah. just licensed. So, yeah, uh, so you were loving that. Yeah. <laughs> You're watching. Um, and, and for realtors that that are newer, um, the, the Fenora team was notorious for the greatest agent open houses that existed. You know, if, right? Yes, yes. Yes. If there was a Fenora agent open house the next day, I'd tell Broderick, schedule's cleared, we were there. So What's we an agent so open house? Wow. Remember those? You're dating yourself, Pat. I know. It was basically when people used to put out plates of food and we'd show up and eat them and say, this is a great house. And then we'd leave. Yeah. That's the old days. The old yeah. days. Yeah. Red. The old days. Yeah. Red wine, white wine. So one of the things I'm, I'm excited to do today is... Um, is when Sean and I did this first in January, we had no idea what we were doing. We completely winged it. Um, to some extent, that's what we're still doing. Um, but I think what would be really cool today, because the market has changed so much, right? There's so much torque or flex or whatever it is, the way houses are selling, how, um, you know, the buyer demographics and, and the process is involved, how real, you know, we're interacting with realtors before, it felt like it was the same 150 agents that were doing everything. And now there's all different dynamics with that. So I know there's all kinds of opinions and theories and thoughts out there. So that'd be cool if we could peel back the curtain a little bit on what we're seeing um, as far as what's out there and what we like and don't like. I know there's things we don't like right now. Um, and then uh, and then just talk about the market in general and uh, some personal anecdotes. But before we do that, I don't know if some of these volumes loud. If you want to turn down a little bit because I'm getting a, uh, a bounce back. Definitely a bounce back. Yeah. It's usually bottom left guy. It's Sean. Um, yeah, yeah. So, but before we do that, we've talked before about appropriate pricing and, uh, and, and you know, houses priced here that are intending to sell here as opposed to priced here that intend to sell here. That's been a big bone of contention and point of frustration. So let's start with Sean. How have you found April to be on that side of the market, on that dynamic? Well, I think there is becoming a little bit of a change in the sense that there's becoming evidently clear two strategies that are kind of going on. And uh, that, you know, everyone was doing hold offers as of, uh, everyone was doing hold offers as of January, February into March, and they're still attempting it now. But it is appearing that if you're going to do the hold offers, you have to drastically underprice the home and uh, hopefully you'll get crazy amounts of offers. If you're going to price your house more appropriately to the market and you're going to hold offers, chances are you probably won't get offers. So it looks like there's two strategies I'm seeing is price higher to the market, 48 hour irrevocable or underprice and let them all bid, which I'm not a big fan of. But obviously, there's outlier properties that we have to for our clients sometimes. Um, you know, they bought, they've bought already. They need to get rid of it quick. Or no matter what, it is appearing to that exponentially updated properties, no matter what, will garner offers. But houses that need a little bit of stuff aren't flying off the shelves like they were before. I think buyers have more options to choose from and they're uh, getting a little hesitant and tired of all this monkey business that's going on out there as well yeah well said 
And and one hundred percent agree is when people try to combine both strategies, that's when you get problems, right? So when they 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 want to do they want to get fifty three showings and and twenty two offers, market value seems to be here, and they want to price it there, that and then hold hold offers. That's that's when there's there's a gray area, right? And and I think the, one of the issues with that is people see a house priced here and they just assume one hundred and fifty grand more, and then and then they back off. All right. Emily, yep. what say you? Um, I'm definitely having flashbacks of 2017, like May, where we all got kind of hit with a, a really drastic shift and everybody was confused. So right now, I feel like the buyer agents are confused. I feel like um, the listing agents are torn with strategies. But I, if, if I'm honest, I, I think it lies in educating the sellers right now. It's spend that extra 30 minutes and explain exactly what we're talking about right now to these sellers. Explain the options, the risks, the benefits, the expectations have to be set. Because I'm getting calls from not just my team members, but other agents at my brokerage constantly, and they're like losing it. This is the week I am definitely feeling something happen drastically. I'm getting calls saying like, we held off offers, we didn't get offers, now what do I do? The sellers are upset because the expectations were they were going to get offers. So it all, it's all about that conversation before you activate their listing is to let them know they have to know that the market has shifted and they don't necessarily know that. So I think there's listing agents out there just going in still and saying, here's what you have to do because everybody's doing it, let's do this. And they're not really taking the time to explain <laughs> the scenarios going on right now, the frustration, um, you know, mistakes that we can make. We might have to cancel and reactivate this. Um, the strategy, I remember seeing somebody hold off offers for the first time in my entire career in the Agra in 2016, Pat. Yeah. I was so disgusted. Yeah. I was like, what is this nonsense? Yep. This is Niagara. This That's is not Niagara here. Yeah. And, and then fast forward six months later, I was doing it too. We were all doing it. Why? Because the market dictated that strategy. There were so many buyers needing in these houses. We were allowing that time. We were allowing them all to come in, setting a presentation time. That was in the best interest of the sellers. Everyone understood what was going on. But now, like that strategy, the, the demand doesn't always support that strategy. So that's the, confu the confusion right now. Is you know, But it's all about, I think, is really understanding um, and educating the sellers and I, I, I would love to see our Niagara agents kind of band together and say, okay, uh, and I know Sean's not his head, we've had this conversation, is guys, let's start pricing at the adjusted values. But again, there's issues with that, and I'm sure you guys are going to pipe in here, is when you're that one listing that prices properly, and the guy up the street underprices $100,000 because that seller wants to do that, then it messes up your listing because everybody's like blue car, boom, they're all going over here. Yep. Um, so as buyer agents too, it's really, really important that you know what's going on and you recognize opportunities, right? Sean, we talked about that last night. Sean, Absolutely. you got to Wait, you guys analyze. planned? There was no talking before this. <laughs> he called me about a listing. That was it. Oh my God. We didn't plan. Okay. But uh, that, that, that's what I... I I mean, that's my take right now. It's very interesting and it's, it's all about educating the clients. And if we start pricing proper, I think in a few weeks, we're not going to have a choice. I think it's going to backfire in too many people. Now there's exceptions guys, right? Like the house yeah. with the in-ground pool. Okay. Someone's going to pay an astronomical amount for that house because it has an in-ground pool maybe, um, or certain price points that there is still low inventory. Um, but even the lower stuff, like listing something in the mid 450s, 60 days ago, I was sending people to Airbnbs for four days because yeah. it was a revolving door of showings. And now I'm like, oh, we have three showings in the 48 hours. Yay. You know, they're just like, what's happening? There's yeah. less buyers out. So what do we do as professionals in this industry? We have to take action right now. And that's Agreed. hard oh, to do. Connected. It's hard to do because we're not regulated, yeah. guys. It's yeah. like everyone's doing their thing and no one's telling everybody what to do. We have to educate ourselves and, and spread the word. Yep. What do you think, Sean? 
Well, I think two things. Number one, I think as realtors, we should be reaching out to each other and working with each other. Uh, it warms my heart to hear that agents are reaching out to you, kind of asking for some, because I get the same calls as well. And I love it. It shows that, you know, we're working together and trying to figure out and understand this together. But I'm also in agreement with you. The number one most important thing we need to do is prepare seller expectations. Mm -hmm. That's it. Hands down. Mm -hmm. Seller expectations. Because mm -hmm. it is wild. It's wacky. Some places go guns a-blazing. Others don't. I think we're at the tail end of the guns a-blazing. I kind of was saying this even last month, that some people are still caught up in the frenzy, but others are sitting back being patient and watching. I've never seen more houses under $500,000, let alone under $400,000 now. Going back to February, you couldn't even get a house for under $500,000. So there's definitely a shift coming. One thing I'm a little unsure of, is it lockdown demand suppression? Maybe, you know, uh, is there going to be, but the thing is, uh, is there listing suppression now maybe a little bit because of this? Is more listings going to pop up when the lockdown is over? And is more buyers going to come out? Who knows? That will have a little bit of an impact, but I think that the way it's feeling is there is definitely a shift. It's balancing. Even the places that are selling for multiple offers, getting big numbers, they're not getting 10 or 12 offers. Yeah. They're getting two or three. And the third, the guy who pays big, like I said, I think is running off the fumes of the market and yeah. is still caught up in it all. And I just know, and I've always said this too for the past couple of months, just be patient, pick your spots. There is opportunities available, especially now. So I have a strategy that I've been using that I'll share after for buyers and how to work it all out and figure it out. But uh, I'm in agreement. Seller expectations is 100% what we need to do. Now, here's what I'm hearing. A very positive message to buyers right now is, hey, guys, there's a good chance of securing a property right now right so people are going to hear this and more people might hear this they all start might come out next month again all the buyers come to the table and then and then buy all those houses again like is that going to happen there's so many different yeah. different yeah. ways we can look at this right because you're right i'm wondering if the lockdown is affecting it the other two lockdowns our market went even bonkers like people were still coming from toronto and out of town right guess who's got data <laughs> nice I was um, going to say that I, Katie, I yeah, think, you go first. well, I was just going to say that I think I'm finding on the listing side, um, listings that we've listed just this week, there are less agents coming from Toronto. Um, so mm -hmm. the buyers and maybe buyers that were investors before um, have are actually staying home. <laughs> so I think that that's um, really reduced the amount of buyers, but um, I a hundred percent agree. I mean, strategies and educating our sellers um, and, and expectations. Um, I had buyers this week, um, the $600,000 range seems to be, you know, it's either hot or it's not. So we view a property, it's listed for $599, they're not holding offers. So we submit an offer, my client's like, you know what, um, we're gonna submit an offer $10,000 over asking just to be nice because they probably expected multiple offers and they appreciated that there weren't 10 other offers. We get assigned back $30,000 over asking. So now my buyer's upset, you know, they're like, we, yeah. we're not competing. <laughs> Why do they want us to pay $30,000 over asking? What kind of strategy is that? You know, so I think we really, um, as professionals in Niagara, we really need to reevaluate um, where we're coming from and what our strategies are. It, when stuff like that happens, it makes us look unprofessional, you know, um, and I, it, it's hard to explain to buyers, well, you know, you're trying to give them the positives, at least you're not competing. Mm -hmm. They're like, yeah, but Kate, we still had to pay $20,000 more. If they wanted, you know, that price, they should have listed at 30, you know, anyways. So that's a bit frustrating and, um, uh, you know, like you were saying, we need to get together as realtors. We need to uh, educate our sellers, educate our buyers, 
Um, it, it seems that, and then bully offers, you know, um, I know you guys have talked about it before, but I think now there's people that are just coming in and strongholding, uh, buyers are sick of it and agents are just getting a little bit aggressive towards each other. Um, and I think that we're going to see <laughs> a lot of problems arise, you know, complaints happen on the professional side because people are just becoming ruthless now. Yeah, I, I think one thing that the Niagara market was for, for a long time was relatively predictable. Um, mm -hmm. As much as we talk about 20% price increases and people are upset about it, which I get, I'm not discounting that whatsoever, but we all remember back in 2005, uh, not five and six, seven, eight, nine, three, four, where the, the market was going up by 1% or one and a half percent, right? Yeah. So when you were pricing a house, we were talking about whether to price it at 224.9 or 228.5, right? <laughs> and, and we knew that it was gonna sell, we knew it was gonna sell somewhere within, you know, $500. And, and so now, Emily, you said something earlier, you can price a house, do everything right, price a house here for, for four, 425 with the idea of selling the 450 range. A house, eight doors down comes up for 299 right so that that lack of predictability never existed before and and i don't know like i was related to going on a flight i've used this analogy with sean before if i know what's going to happen i'm cool but as soon as as soon as there's no i hate flying for the record and so that lack of predictability causes stress it causes unknown it causes anxiety and then it causes people to do wacky things and i think that's that's what we've been living through for the last five years um I don't know what, you know, when you look back data wise at 2018 and 19, those were, those were weak years in, in not weak, but they were nowhere close to where we're at now. And, and this is 2016 and 17 on steroids. It's, it's, it's destroying what we had four five years ago. And it was manic back then. Um, very quick numbers. Numbers. Show I know. us the numbers. So everybody talks about this, this, uh, there's a shift and I don't know the the data the data tells something else so when you look the one thing i like to i looked at is listings um and sales on a monthly basis so far this year and then how do they how did that compare to the last 10 years right so in january almost across the board uh niagara was down 15 percent in new listings over what was normal st Catharines was 24 percent down niagara falls 13 percent down and then every market in niagara has basically done this February was up 10, 12, 15% over the normal. And then March was huge. Remember, we were all celebrating, right? Oh my God, we're back. We got, we got listings. This is going to be great. And so like Niagara across the board was 50% higher. St. Catharines 32, Niagara Falls 49. And now it's pulled right back. They, mm -hmm. And it's the same as January where the new listing inventory for Niagara is back to, it's just 13% higher than, than normal. St. Catharines is flat. It's back to 0%. And Niagara Falls is going to be at about zero or two percent above the ten-year average, but sales are twenty, thirty, forty percent higher in April than the last ten years. So you got new listings sitting down here, flat, relatively the same as the previous ten-year average, and sales are thirty, forty. Like Niagara Falls is going to be about thirty-seven percent higher than the last ten years. And so that, to me, tells me you've got you've got inventory getting crunched, getting squeezed out by lockdown right and but buyers are like screw lockdown i'm still going to buy a house and so the buyer demand is still still happening so if we have this for another for the next three weeks in may the 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 like if you look on a weekly basis the new listing inventory is doing this mm -hmm. and if it does that for three more weeks and sales keep doing that what do we have we have the same thing that's happened coast to coast in canada right now emily no i i just think it's it's the the buyers and sellers that they're listening there's definitely agents on and there's other people on today is is it is doing this and so many things can affect the it shifting again in may and june because a lot of these buyers are they sitting back thinking well there's going to be a ton of listings coming up there has yeah. to be we've been in a lockdown people haven't wanted to list i'm going to wait until all the listings come up in may and june i've yeah. heard buyers say that so i'm not looking right now i'm not being a sucker i'm going to go wait Okay, and then we have some other factors though, affecting things. We have people, I've talked to a lot of people this week that are like, they're really worried about this new government 
tax affecting things because in 2017 they implemented a new foreign tax and it psychologically like made everybody crazy and it really affected our market so is this is this new uh vacant uh you know tax going tax. To affect are us? you talking about the tax of uh taxing our principal residences N no there's they're, okay. they're talking about taxing um vacant home tax so they yeah. don't want people sitting in the houses vacant anymore but, yeah, yeah, but yeah, again yeah. it's is it going to affect them i don't know but it might maybe psychologically they're going to get nervous that that might bring things down so what's really happening is it the lockdown is it is it interest rates are increasing is it they're just waiting for more inventory um but then all these buyers come rushing back and pat like you said it could it could go back to january february again it could good but I well, think going one... back to we have to educate and, and, and educate because Kate, when we talk about those situations where a seller is listing at you know three ninety nine in hopes of getting four fifty and you're bringing a three ninety nine full price and that's so frustrating to the buyer I completely understand we had a few situations like that last week on our team but the seller is fully expected to get. 450 and all the data we showed them indicated that they would get it and they wanted to underprice it but the issue is they didn't underprice it enough so it's almost like right. this the listing agents are nervous right now and they're like oh man what if i don't get offers they're dragging that price down more that list price down more and activate and then we're all like Pfft. it just messed up all of our listing around the corner we're listing right properly. yeah yeah so, so this is a real, a real issue right now. And in my opinion, it's the asking prices right now are stressing out everybody. Mm -hmm. We're stressed out as listing agents, wondering if we're going to get the offers. The buying agents are stressed out trying to analyze if they underprice for a bidding war, if they didn't, or what's, what do they want? What's your expectations is a question that we've been hearing, especially Toronto agents asking us, what's your seller's expectation? That question used to bother me. Like, why are they yeah. asking me? But yeah. I understand what they're asking. They want to know, how did you guys price this? I want to get a sale. Like, what do you need from me? Right. Because right? yeah. they don't have our data a lot of the times. Um, but it's, it's super confusing. And, and everyone's frustrated. And the buyers are frustrated. The sellers are frustrated. Our job is to, is to educate and really explain what's happening and try to alleviate that frustration and that stress. Because I don't know about you guys, but I've had some nights in the last month where I'm losing sleep. Yeah. over a listing and, and i don't and like that's that what, feeling right? that's a that's a piece of the whole process that i and i think but I, I i know it's not enough that gets out there that the general public sees what's going on and they don't know what behind every one of these situations there is like I, I was talking the other day right what's going on right now is so simple on one hand but it's it's never been more complicated or complex mm -hmm. right now and mm -hmm. people will see an outcome of something and they have no idea about you know, the fact that, that there was, you know, a million steps between what happened and, and, and from the start. And, um, and, and so that strain, that stress that goes on, like, this is not like we go for lunch and we hang out and I play PS4. Like it, same as you, Emily, like I'm sitting there at 1030 night going, how the hell am I going to find a resolution? And part of me, I love that part of the job. Like I love that point of friction where it's like, I've got this problem. How can I find my way out of it? I love that. Um, as much as, you know, the, the straight ahead sales and, and processes are always nice. I love the friction part of it, too. But um, I don't think people realize th for the, the really conscientious, legit, awesome agents. And there's a ton in here for the record. Thank you for joining us. What we what we actually the mental bandwidth that is occupied by by this kind of a market. It's and we were talking about that before, Sean. People say you guys must love this market. Right. No, yeah. who does? No. Buyers yeah. don't like it. Sellers don't like it. Agents don't like it. No one likes it. Yeah, nope. yeah. it's not fun for anybody. The, uh, you know? the the double whammy on pricing right now too is is that we've talked about it a bunch. That the the first time buyer who's already getting pinched and already frustrated, and then that that sort of three hundred to four fifty price range. Um, you look at St. Catharines detached across the board up to a million bucks. Every segment of the market has been about 105 to 110 percent of asking, um, going back 60 days. Right now, that that sort of 399 to four and a quarter is sitting at 119 percent of asking. You know that that's that's 
so that's a whole lot of people going in seeing a house for 349 thing and yeah i'm good to 380 and it sells for 460 so that that segment of the market is the is getting you know having the most frustration i i, I expect but that or, segment of the market is also the weirdest right now as well because there's tons of houses for sale uh for example the house on wool beautiful little house priced at 499 I thought it would have gone for 475 to potentially over 500 and it did not. It got 465. So there is opportunities for buyers out there. Uh, like I said, you know, for me, the big challenge is, and for all of us, the big challenge is, is these lockdowns. These yeah. lockdowns muck up momentum. Here we are, start the year in a lockdown. All of a sudden, March comes, inventory's coming. We're out of this lockdown new lockdown comes in you know so does it suppress demand some buy does it increase buyer demand because maybe buyers want to take advantage of this does it suppress inventory is a lot of people going to list we don't know come the nice weather and finally out of a lockdown like personally i find that a lot of people are doing real estate during the lockdowns because they got nothing else to do yeah i think this summer i think you know yeah. If everything comes, I hate to say it, I think we're going to be in the lockdown well into June. But what? once, yeah, I hate to say it. I hate to say it. That's my prediction. Uh, anyways, hopefully by the end of June, July, and August, flourishing, everything's open. I don't know many people are going to want to look at real estate. They're going to want to do stuff. Yeah, that true. should drastically change things as well. Because personally, I think I'd like to do some stuff this summer if it's open <laughs> and not have to trudge these treacherous waters. Um, so, you know, it, it is so, so confusing for all of us. But I like what I think we can all reach out to each other and, and ask and different things like that. Uh, you know, and the number one thing, and I can't express it enough, and Emily touched on it, and we all agree, is preparing expectations for sellers and buyers, because I had a frustrating situation as well, Katie, where the house got drastically reduced low, brought an offer in on it yesterday, full price, and then the agent says, nope, your offer is denied. And I said, okay, well, what do you want? They wanted uh, $50,000 more than what we had offered. I said, well, then why did you price it at six fifty if you want seven hundred? Why didn't you price it at six ninety nine? And that I find is extremely unfair to buyers and and to understand this market is like how can they ask that and I give them it and they won't take it and now they're telling me they want fifty thousand dollars more. That I cannot understand and I hate it. But this, okay, and I want to turn that into a positive, guys, because this is going to happen. This is happening this week, these conversations where the buyer agents are saying this to the listing agent. So what could happen is the listing agents start getting nervous and say, look, like, this is going to piss people off. Like, we, we, you know, we really should be pricing it where we need to be. If this happens enough over the next few weeks, it could contribute to – uh, a new strategy shift in Niagara. So that's a good thing, I think. Although I'm not happy you got frustrated and that's frustrating for your buyer. But if that keeps happening, it, it will probably force listing agents and sellers to, to take a look at that. I think, I don't, I, I, I hate making predictions. You know, guys, it's so hard. People ask us what's gonna happen. But I, I've done blogs for years on, on the spring market. Everybody waits to the nice weather to list their house. Oh, everybody wait. And now there's a lockdown. So everybody might be waiting for lockdown to be over and for the nice weather to list their house. So that's an interesting uh, point, Sean, on maybe we, it's possible we have a surge of listings coming up in by, you know, end of May, June, July, we have all these listings. And now the buyers are like, you know what, we're going on vacation, we're doing things, or we're still in the lockdown. It's so, it's so hard to tell. But um it, it, you know, it's hard. It's hard to predict. Um, we just have to stay on top of things and really manage our, our clients' emotions because this is an emotional, stressful thing on them. And our job, they look at us like for the for the answers. They look at us to stay calm. You know, we have to say things like, "This is normal. This is this is what we expected." Remember, we talked about this. Remember, we talked. We're in a shift, and we can't predict what's going to happen next week. And pricing houses like the day we're activating them. 
It's like, because, yeah. you know, we, we, we might need to change what our list price based on your neighbors uh, the day before. We don't know what's going to happen right now. Um, don't, it, don't, you guys, don't you guys find, though, in a, in a market where there's so many outliers, um, it's hard to predict what it's going to go for. So as much as we talk about pricing it close to what market is, oftentimes it's a struggle to, to know what market is. Yes. <laughs> right so and, hard. and and so we think it's gonna like like i said before your house is probably going to sell somewhere between 350 and 365,000 now it's your house is probably going to sell somewhere between 680 and 780 right and and so that setting up expectations thing i totally agree with you i absolutely love the risk and rewards mm -hmm. randy Mulder says that's the key the we talked about this before conversation and and then and then not to be technical but documenting it so there's a reason there's a reference point to go back to but um but yeah setting up expectations on, on something that's tough to predict really tough to predict i don't know that that's that's a but sean super. let me ask sean something have you yeah. priced a house lately or you know as anybody where you you're not pricing it for a bidding war but it still gets a bidding war like, so you have to really analyze the demand for that product, right? And and know. One hundred percent. There is outlier properties, like you said, a house with a pool right now. If you want to make your face and you have a pool, put your house up for sale because someone will pay you a large amount of money We're gonna, for your pool, not we'll for your house, but for your pool. They'll pay a mortgage for your pool. Yeah. It's wild. It's wild. But again, too, no matter what, it, the, the nice, updated, blinged out houses will always garner multiple offers. You can price those right to the market and you'll still get three, four, five offers because people will pay for nice. People always have paid for nice. They'll continue to pay for nice. But one thing I noticed last week was that... Um, one thing I noticed last week was I felt I, I listed a couple of lower price properties and I was not getting very many showings. I felt like the Monday started, the lockdown started. It seemed as though everyone was kind of somewhat respecting, okay, we're going to stay home. And that lasted for a week. All of a sudden this week, there seems to be showings and buyers and this and that. But the one thing we got to remind everyone in Niagara, and, and I want us all to acknowledge and realize this, that no matter what, if Dan, demand suppresses a little bit, there is still so much demand for homes in Niagara. There is still so much demand for homes in Niagara. If you price your house properly, even if it kind of balances out and demand suppresses, guess what? If you price your house properly, your house will sell in two or three weeks. We have to remember, I remember back in early 2000s, I had houses for months. Months. What was the accomplishing? 85 days on the market. 90 days on the market. Yeah. yeah. What we accomplish now is so, you know, again, it goes to preparing expectations that, hey, you know what? The craziness may settle, but we're still in a good position for our sellers for that. But again, it really does all come down to starting to price properly. Really, really does because Pat you said it right there again. What is market value? We don't know. To determine market value, if everyone started pricing their houses properly, we'd understand market value. Not to mention, we also understand yes, no matter what, some houses will still scorch. We'll find out what houses are in high demand. You know, so it really is going to come down to pricing expectations and see what happens after this lockdown and fingers crossed the final one and we can just get going. I think we can all agree though and uh, that this month like right now is a good opportunity for buyers right so Absolutely. the sellers had their their time the sellers and let's face it and yes it's not if we're not having fun doing this people think our job is great right now it's so stressful uh you, you know you know it's it's a it's a it's a tough thing to figure out um Lost my train of thought. I have a dog jumping on me here. <laughs> <laughs> so, Katie, what's your what's Live. your theory on the next on the next sixty days? And for the record, this is on the record, so we'll hold you to it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna look into my crystal ball. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't I don't know. This week has kind of thrown me a little bit. It seems yeah, to it's different. Be, it seems to be slowing a little bit. Um, I think though, like looking back to 2017. 
it was so crazy there. And then the summer kind of died off, I think a little bit. And I think like what Sean said, people, if we're able to actually get out and go places are gonna do that. So, um, but I, I still think there's people that are in the market, buyers that are thinking they're just gonna keep waiting. You know, I, I get a lot of, Kate, are the prices gonna drop? <laughs> I'm like, well, no, yeah. the prices are not gonna drop right now, you know? Um, but like Emily said, maybe this is a good time. They're leveling out a little bit. Um, I, I think the next 60 days though are typically always busy until, you know, May and June. And then I think it's gonna start to really kind of level, level out. Um, it, it's so hard to say though, because who would have thought in January, it was like January 1st, the calendar turned and we came into this even crazier market, you know? We had two listings, I think the first or second week, and it wasn't like 20 or 30 showings, it was 100 showings. Mm -hmm. um, and who would have predicted, you know, when you talk about pricing, there was no data to support these crazy prices. But I think now, now there is. So, you know, in most neighborhoods, there has been a sale. So, you know, look at that and price it. And, and Randy just commented, you know, pricing is like a moving dartboard which is true. I mean, sometimes you price it at the, the last highest sale and you still get multiple offers. Yeah. So, you know, I'm telling sellers that extra money is, you know, um, icing on the cake. If you get more than, than your neighbor did, then that's just all, all bonus, right? It's like winning a lottery. Um, because yeah. sometimes you do list stuff and, you know, you think you're not going to have a ton of activity and you do. Um, and, but it, it seems like, you know, you only need two or three offers as opposed to 20 and people are still getting crazy numbers. So, and we're getting conditions in, right? That's yeah. positive right now. Yeah. Has really anybody positive. seen, has anybody been involved with an SOP condition so far this year? <laughs> what, when's what the last SOP? time you did one? Yep. Last conditional week. Conditional sale of property, I mean, for those. That, yep. Yeah. I had someone bring an offer conditional on sale of their home on my listing out in Fort Erie. And? and we took it. I'll take conditions any day of the week. No problem. Let's do deal. You know, like, I mean, it, we're, we're, we're here to help our clients facilitate and sell houses. And man, if someone wants to bring conditions, no yeah. problem. Yep. Let's go. You know, and there is conditions. I've got three of my listings that have conditional offers on them. And there's opportunities. And, and that's where I think us as agents for our buyers, I've been drastically studying the market. I agree with Keith. There's a weird oddity going on in the six to $800,000 market. It appears that some places are absolutely scorching it and others aren't. So my strategy is this. Typically, everyone's doing these hold offers now. and They're listing like on Wednesday and Thursday and doing offers Monday, Tuesdays or Wednesdays. So I go and set all those showings up and I'll go show all 10 properties to my buyers and we'll pace, patiently watch and pick out the top three that we like. The other thing is too, is stay away from the drastically priced low properties. They're going to scorch, but then you find the one that's actually priced a little right. Call the agent up two hours before offer chat. I don't think they're getting the offers. I don't think I'm getting any offers. Boom, there's the one, guys. Let's go. You know, and there's picked up numerous from the people who are holding offers. And and like he said, though, I don't bring them just asking price. I bring them slightly over because I don't want to see the cancellation and relist. You know, and you gotta dangle something to them that burden in now, take it, okay, let's go and move on our way. But there's definitely opportunities and you just got to kind of watch what's going on. Um, you know, obviously, houses that are done up great, houses with pools, going to scorch. Uh, under drastically underpriced houses, going to scorch. But then houses that are priced a little more appropriately, opportunities for buyers. They don't have to go guns a blazing. I'm going to go out tomorrow with some buyers. I'm going to try this out again. And I'm going to have them in a house by Tuesday. First off, <laughs> if there's so any much. buyer agents listening, guys, go watch this video back. Listen to Sean's yeah. channel. Is, this is so smart. It's like yeah. knowledge bombs getting dropped. This is, but you see what he does is he analyzes. He knows what's going on, and that's yeah. I can't say that enough. You need a you need a very 
professional buyer agent on your side in this market right now that knows what's going on, that's able to do their extra homework and to look and analyze the other ones that sold and call the listing agent and feel them out and be professional. You know, we let, let's stop fighting and arguing with each other and bullying each other. It, it's garbage. You yeah. know, it's, it's let's work together to get these houses sold and to get our clients in these homes and to make our sellers happy and all work together. <laughs> Sean, whoever I agree, we've got to work together. It, it's this, this aggressive nature drives me up the wall. It's made me so upset and sad because I love selling real estate. I love helping people. I love working with our fellow Niagara realtors in particular because it's always been a nice little small community of all of us working together, obviously out of town agents are coming in and no disrespect to them. There's some really great agents out there for sure. But also, too, they also bring this aggressive nature that I feel transcends to some of our younger, not as seasoned agents. And they kind of pick up on some of these agents' bad habits and start transcending it in our market. And it's just, it's, it's not fun and enjoyable, uh, for sure. And yeah. I'm the first person to just want to do a nice, fun transaction with anybody, always. And this total aggressive stuff has just got to stop. Because then not only that, it puts you in binds with your clients. And sometimes that's when you get confused of what to do. And people, it, it puts you in spots where other people are getting pissed at you because this and that. And it, it's just, it just needs to go back to the good old fun price. The house is higher, 48 hour irrevocable and let it ride. And getting think, emotional can yeah. cost through the sale, right? You have think, to know how to handle those situations and conversations to get the deal together. Because the other guy on the other end could be so frustrated. He's just frustrated. He's, he's stressed. He's, you know, he's taking it out on you. Okay, that's fine. Let him. But try to get the deal together still. Yeah. Stay calm. Yeah, my, just so you know, my number, one, my number one thing of how to deal with these buyer agents who get very, very aggressive with you is simply like this. Buyer agent, I appreciate you're wearing your buyer's hat today and you're doing the best for your yes. buyer. But I am wearing my seller hat and I am doing the best for my seller. If you had a listing, would you not want to do what's best for your seller? Yeah. Yes, I would. Well, thank you very much. You just answered my question. Please respect the 48-hour irrevocable and send me your offer. If not, that's your decision and your buyers may lose out on a house. I'm telling you, Five minutes after Ooh. that conversation, Form 801, 48 hour irrevocable, yeah. done. You know? And then once you explain it to them that way, they get it. They get it. No one's going to disagree. Mm -hmm. So, awesome, you, should get a, uh, you should get Sean's seller's hat, hats made up. Just a yeah. thought. <laughs> but this is this a therapy session for the it local works. agents right now. This yeah. Is, this Katie, is, what were you going to say? Thing. Oh, I was just going to say that we have to remember our buyers and sellers are human and they have emotions and people are going through, why does the market, uh, real estate market go round? Because unfortunately people are splitting up, people are passing away. And so the market, we have to show a little bit of compassion. Our sellers and buyers are, are humans as well as, as we are. And I think, we forget about that, you know, it's just like, boom, 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 you know, there's 20 offers. And, um, you know, I had to explain the other day to an agent, they wanted a, a crazy deposit. And I said, Look, you know, my clients, unfortunately, you know, they're, they, they can't, they're buying two homes, and they just don't have $40,000 each to give a deposit. Um, you know, and once I explained it, they were they people are like, Oh, that's fine. You know, but um, people have, you know, lost jobs. We're in a lockdown again for the third time. It's, um, you know, I think if we slow down a little bit sometimes and think mm -hmm. about what's going element. on. Yeah, it, it uh, <clears throat> people just get so lost in, in just the, the daily grind, you know. And mm -hmm. um, So I agree, Katie, in the sense that the... The joy of a transaction that we've had in the past, celebrating and, and doing a great job selling our client's house and getting them their dream home, yeah. that fun we used to have with our clients, it's not so much fun right no. now. No. And no matter what, I know personally myself, I always try to keep that experience alive 
I'm hands on with my people, but I do notice a lot of other people are just quick to slam the big offer in on the house or underprice the client's house, get it sold, pop them into a thing. And that joy of, of buying and selling your home is not a joyable experience. I think to a lot of agents, it's just become a transaction yeah. rather than a relationship. And, and we got to always remember, if you want to last in this business, create that relationship. And you can still create relationships in this current market. And you don't need to be a full able all the time just to get the deal done, you know? And, and that's the, the key thing that really bothers me the most is, is, is just some people's behaviors out there. And, uh, you know, I think we can, and again, I, I don't want, this is not everybody, you know, there's yeah. great people out there. And I, and I don't even want to say it, it, it's on them. It's just, they're caught up in what's going on and they just, they just don't even know that it's happening to themselves. And so I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic that there is going to be a little bit of a balancing coming. I do, especially to if the lockdown ends and there's a surge of inventory and demand does kind of stay somewhat suppressed. I don't know if there's going to be a real huge surge come once the lockdown's lifted. Uh, because I'm already noticing, like you said, Pat, like, I watched again, we, we had a number of listings, but the one day the solds outdid the new listings this week, you know? We had well, a pretty the last, good yeah. the last we had a good listing day yesterday, though. Um, and, you know, they're going to still keep coming out, but I, I see a lot, a lot of houses out there. And if you're just cautious and pick your spots and make calls, call agents, what's going on, what's happening, you know? Like, I listed a couple places. And the one thing I want to put out there, too, just in regards to the 48-hour irrevocable, it works really handy because what happens is, is that all of these people are doing hold offers, and you're the 48-hour irrevocable, and you might get a little overlooked. But once Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday are over, and all those hold offers are sold, and some of them scorch big numbers, they turn your eyes to your property going like, oh, well, that just got that. This one's priced there. It's ready to go. Guess what? Pull your 48-hour irrevocable, and I bet you get multiple offers again. You know, that's the nice secret of the 48. You can do kind of a hold offers anytime, and that's uh, worked out quite well for me because, again, like I said, this demand being a little suppressed, they're not coming guns a-blazing first day on the market. It's sometimes – two, three days before you get that momentum. Um, so I don't know. I'm just a fan of 40 an hour in mobile. I think everyone knows that. <laughs> First of all, whoever does your digital media, I need you to call them and get them to make up a scorched gif with you <laughs> and like the word scorched coming in like scorch. And then it starts getting attached to all of your out outgoing media from now on. <laughs> and I am dead serious. You like uh, the scorch, Jay, buddy? You like the scorch. Yeah, yeah. This, I've never heard you use the word, and, and now I'm going to be walking around using it today. Oh, you're going to be doing it all day. Scorching. So there's been... There's been <laughs> there's, it's my new been, word. It's my new word. Yeah, though. that's good. Scorch. There's been a whole bunch of really good questions and points made along the way. Um, going about 10 minutes back, Scott, Max, uh, my buddy, asked, and it, I we looked into it on our side, and, and it was where are... Who is sorry why are sellers selling are they selling to cash out are they moving away are they moving up to a bigger house they're moving down and i would love for realtors to do it um when we when i look on our sales board and i go back the last six months there's a very small percentage of people that we've had that have sold that have bought within niagara whether it's a lateral move or whatever the the like the vast, 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 vast majority of our traditional listings, like we've done a bunch of new construction, but traditional listings are estate sales or moving out of market. Scott moved up to an absolutely incredible spot in Quebec. Um, so that that's an interesting part of it where you've got, we've got buyers from out of market who aren't feeding the supply chain, which is, which is a problem. But we also have, a, I think a lot of our seller piece of the market have also, we've all heard about people moving to the East Coast and uh, we've had we've had two or three people sell here and and make their cottage up north a, a year round home. Um, so you've also got people that are exiting the market on the seller side. So I'm curious, you guys, if you guys 
look through uh, through your deals and see. I'm curious what your numbers are on that because uh, I was shocked and you know very few, not very few, but a smaller percentage of people that you know sold on Tavistock and bought on Vansickle or whatever it is. But anyway, um, and then one other point, Sean, you mentioned people's resilience. Um, and if you look at the total number of sales in Niagara last year was the second highest ever during COVID, right? When we look back on this historically, the second largest number of homes changed hands in 2020, uh, 8,700 and something. This year, we're going to crack 10,000 sales in, in 2020, unless there's a significant change. But right now, we're on pace for nearly, nearly 11,000 sales. Um, the highest ever was four years ago, 2016, five years ago, 9,100 9, or something like that. So that's, you talk about resilience and people's ability to, to maneuver, right? That's incredible. Um, March and April of this year are going to post the highest total number of sales for any month ever in the history of Niagara, even looking at other spring markets and other times of the year. So that's ridiculous, really, when you think about it. Like during a lockdown, to post the second highest number of sales in a month ever. Um, and, and so that, that's resilience. Meanwhile, again, listings have been squished a little bit, but that's okay. Um, and here's the other one. This is a public service announcement for all the realtors that are watching is April, 2020. Remember when we talked about it was down uh, 60% or whatever in sales. It's going to be up this, this month is going to be up because they're going to do a year to date. Kate, talk to the board about this is going to be up 287%, 285, 290%. So there's going to be graphics everywhere about April is up 290%. And it's, it's clearly an apple compared to a volleyball, right? Um, but again, it all speaks to people's ability to maneuver. So I think my theory, and I'll go on the record on this, is once we get out of this lockdown, once we get to the end of May, this, this, so we were up here in March, listings and sales tracked down this way in April. And I think it's going to bounce back. And my, my theory anyway, into the end of May through June and July, um, we're we're going to be we're going to be busy. I think we're going to see a, 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 a historic market carry right through the summer. <laughs> my theory. And I've been wrong. That does not bode well for my summer. What's that? That does not bode well for my summer. John wants to go yeah. away. He wants to do. I, I I just want to lock myself in my backyard by my pool yeah. and I'm good to go. Yeah. I don't know. That's my theory. I, I think there's a certain number of buyers who are on the sidelines right now who still plan on getting down here. Like, look, think about your guys' own, your own client inventory, or your, I shouldn't say client inventory. That's terrible. It's like we put them on shelves. Your own clients, how many are you dealing with that are trying to get down to Niagara right now? <clears throat> right? And so multiply that by... There, I'll tell you this. There's no doubt that there's demand. There's demand, there's some suppressed demand, and we might even have suppressed demand for a year or two, but there will constantly be demand for our market for 100%. the next number of years. Okay, maybe the demand won't be as scorching as what we saw with all these crazy multiple offers, which is great news, but there will be constant demand for our market. And I know this because there's so many outlying factors Immigration is going to come. They're going to keep growing Toronto, Canada. I mean, like the stats say, they want to, in 10 years, our population in Niagara is about 500,000 right now. In 10 years, they're anticipating it to be 750,000. That is a heck of a lot of people coming here. We don't have enough houses to house 250,000 more people. Obviously, there's going to be new construction and all these different factors, but there will be demand for Niagara for years and years to come. Yep. Don't get me wrong, there'll be shifts, interest rates come around, interest rates go up a little bit, that could cause all these different things, but those who can afford to buy will buy, and then it will just keep on moving along. So all these little oddities we're experiencing right now, I mean, really, truly, it's these lockdowns that make us fluctuate so much, like give us a nice, just even keeled year, and then, you know, then we can really kind of figure out where things are going and I, think, I got to run, guys. What's that? I got to run. It's 1030. Yeah. yeah. It's Friday. Got a day ahead of me. But this was absolutely amazing. Yeah, it was lovely. I'm glad that we all generally feel the same. The consensus among us is that expectations is huge, preparing everybody. 
and just reach out to others and ask, what would you do? Or, hey, if you're listing a property in a neighborhood, someone already sold theirs, ask them how many showings they got. What happened? Did yeah. you hold? Did you, you know, all those different things. Yeah. We can help each other. Man, I got no secrets. You can call me anytime. I'll tell you what's what. I want to see everybody well, succeed. And, uh, you know, so again, don't be shy to call. As much as I, as much as I love Broker Bay and all that stuff, I miss the days when we were calling the offices and talking to the front desk and then getting put through the agent. And those conversations are down, you know, 98%. Um, so you're 100% right. Um, hey, I'm listening to house five doors down. You sold that other one. Let's talk. And that kind of camaraderie stuff, I think we would all benefit enormously from having that come back into our lives. Absolutely. When lockdown's done, we're going to have a big Team Fenora agent open house. Yes, you are. <laughs> well, it's, <laughs> it's yes. so hard. You miss this, right? That's yeah. why when Sean called to ask me, I'm like, uh-oh, Sean DeLotte's calling me. Why is he calling me? Yeah. <laughs> His office and is like, he could throw the, a baseball to me. And he's like, will you do this? I'm like, of course. I, yeah. I miss, you know, seeing everybody, talking to everybody. Yeah. You know, it, uh, when somebody calls for, you know, my opinion, I'm like, of course, sure, you know. Yeah. So. This and it's hard great, to imagine. Yeah. It's hard to imagine, but lockdown will be done and we, we will be back to all the good stuff that we all used to love. Emily, what were you going to say? Sorry. And then we'll wrap up. No, I just said this has been great hearing everybody, everybody's yeah. opinions and perspective on what's happening. Because, again, it is it is very interesting out there. Um, yeah. But staying positive is very important. Staying on top of things Absolutely. and just Absolutely. analyzing, you know, uh, the demand is so important. That's the key is like, what's the demand like, um, you know, and I don't think we're going to solve our problem of people drastically underpricing. I, I don't think we'll ever, you know, eliminate that, uh, especially if those, you know, that starts getting unbalanced again this summer. I don't know. It's going to mm. be difficult. But the scary thing to me is, if we're pricing houses at the adjusted prices higher and the demand picks up even more and then they start going even higher, know. you know, then we have appraisal issues and stuff. And I saw some comments. I'll read them back later. Um, yeah. Somebody, uh, you know, there's all kinds of issues that comes about, but I think we just have to work together is the big message today to, to yep. Niagara agents and um, to any buyers that are out here or sellers, you know, have a conversation with a good agent and, and really get educated on what's happening right now and stay on top of things. Yep. Yeah. Kudos. Awesome. All right. Okay, everybody have a great weekend. Yep. Thank you, Thank guys. You guys. Thanks for asking me, Thanks. guys. Thank yeah. you. All right. Awesome. Okay. We'll see ya. Ciao. See you guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.